Jason. Well, Mark, though, can you get some extra buzz if you are tapping into something that's already there? You know, it depends. I mean, let's say you're a restaurant and it's a geographic industry. Um, if you're in, say, Detroit, um, Detroit's really not a brand. It's not something people visit. It's not something that's enthusiastic. But let's say you're in Washington, D.C. You've got, you know, people who are visiting from all over the world. Um, and you can throw a little spice in there. You can have, let's say, it's, you know, the, the Clinton Clutch hamburger and, uh, you know, the Bloomburger. And every week you come out with the stats, you know, what's selling better? Is it the Clinton Clutch or the Bloomburger? Well, that's funny. <laughs> Someone should do that if they haven't yeah. already. <laughs> and do you think, is there any danger of sort of becoming cheesy or becoming too trendy and then not trendy? Well, you know, I do think that, uh, like what the panelists are saying, that you should actually do something you love. But at, in regards to being cheesy, there's all levels, no matter what business you're in. If you're in fashion, it could be everywhere from Bergdorf Goodman to Macy's to Target to J.C. Penney's. And there's always uh, some community that needs that service. So uh, I don't think you can necessarily be too cheesy, but you'll find that out, obviously, you know, when people stop coming if in. If people aren't coming right. in. Okay. I want to expand this conversation because this is sort of my all-star marketing panel right here. And just get a, a very implemental, implementable tip from each of you guys about what you've learned from marketing that we could tell other small business people. So, Mark, let's start with you, actually, because we get so many questions about buzz, guerrilla marketing, spreading the word without spending money. Well, the root of all buzz uh, is stories. And uh, in, in, you want people talking about your brand. You want people talking about the experience that they had at your restaurant or, you know, with your, you know, clothing line, whatever it may be. And in order to get people talking and telling stories, you need to kind of push buttons. And they're tried and true things people always talk about. People talk about secrets. How many times have you heard the phrase, I'm not supposed to tell you this? Right. But so you create a secret as a company? You, you create a secret, you, you limit supply, hmm. um, and you limit knowledge. The outrageous always works, the unusual always works, things about taboo, you know, we all talk about sex and lies, and Bill Clinton, gosh, you know, everyone's upstanding in America, but what do we watch? What do we talk about? Well, this, this kind of has something to do with what you talk about all the time, Simon, is creating this story. Right. I would agree that uh, all buzz has a story, and I'd take it a step further, which is all stories have some sort of purpose, cause, or belief behind them, at least the authentic ones, the ones that will last for a while. Okay, well, let's get to the person who's actually done well, it. Yeah, you know, I agree. I think that you have to create a movement. Whatever your brand is, you create a movement, it's a movie. You can explain it. The, the Formosa, the, the restaurant, it's a movement. It's old Hollywood, everybody enjoys it, as well as the, the young lady uh, you know, doing the tours. It's a movement of an intimate viewing of celebrities and activities that happen. So she's creating a movement. The same with Fubu, what did I do? Did I put three sleeves on a shirt? No. I create a movement. But you know? how did you create it? So you created it in your office, but how did you get other people to jump on board? Well, what I did was I basically took 10 shirts over three years, kept going to video sets, putting them on artists, taking them back, putting them on artists, taking them back, wearing it on my own date, whatever the case may be. Before you know it, it was a movement because the videos were playing across the country. Everybody saw these 10 shirts and they said, well, if the artists are wearing it and they can afford anything in the world, I need to be part of that. You're shaking your head, Mark. It's, you know, if it's easy, then don't do it because it's if, if it's easy everyone else is doing it and it's usually the harder path and you know want to try and rename a town or yeah. get celebrities yes. to wear your product that's really hard but and remember the reward the and reward i was having was i was a fan anyway and i was standing next to celebrities so whether they so were or not i got to stand next to LL Cool J so I didn't care right, and, and it's always a reward and not necessarily monetarily but before you know it you're having so much fun that the monetary aspect comes in. And just to, to talk about what you're referring to, you renamed a town and it was a big marketing piece and got all kinds of press for yeah. a company. All right, Simon, you were shaking your head. Fubu, well, Fubu is a great example. I mean, it wasn't a stunt. Uh, this, the FUBU has lasting power, again, because he stood on these sets for 18 hours because he was having fun. He genuinely enjoyed what he was doing and he knew what had to be done. As he says, it's a movement, it's a purpose, it's a cause. And that has never changed. Even with success, that has never changed. Um, anybody can have short-term success if they're motivated just by a little bit of cash or a, I could sell a few shirts. But if you have a belief, that's where the longevity comes from. And FUBU proves it. Thank you. All right, Simon Sinek, thank you so much for coming and joining us remotely. And thank both of you so much for coming on. This was great. We get so many questions about marketing, and to have these experts here really is helpful for us. Thanks, Sam. Thanks. Thank you. You might not think the movie business has much in common with small business, but there are a lot of similarities in terms of the issues each faces. Recently, three Hollywood heavyweights spoke at an American Express iconic event at the Los Angeles Film Festival. They 